Ever wonder what laws most impact your business? Stay tuned and we'll tell you all about them. Welcome to the Work Hardaholic Show with your host, the original Work Hardaholic, Shirley Crawford, author, speaker, and small business consultant for over 20 years, helping you to work hard, play harder, and business better. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Work Hardaholic Show. I am Shirley Crawford, your host, the original Work Hardaholic, and today, we have immersed ourselves. We're getting, we're still getting geared up and, and 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 adjusting to the fact that it's 2024. And so, what does that mean, right? So I keep saying, I want more in 2024, but more what? And how are you going to go about doing it? And I'm also a firm believer that before you start adding on, you need to make sure that your foundation is in the right place, that you have the right tools, the right resources, the right team, the right information. Okay, so with that note in mind, I want to start off with some very basic things about your business. If you are a business leader, this does apply to you as well. Um, actually, if you're an employee, it, apply, it probably applies to you even more because this is the way that you're going to get the promotions um, leveled up to the next you know, level um, with regards to pay and influencing your companies if you own it or not. So here's the thing. One of the conundrums um, that we have to deal with as entrepreneurs, as leaders, is understanding the balance of administrative task and money-making activity. And it sounds so simple, but a lot of times because we aren't doing things intentionally, we catch ourselves being you know, focused and driven by the emails that come in, the customers that complain, um, the phone calls that come in. But in 2024, I want you all to be more intentional and also to take a better tally, a summary of what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay? So um, I, I came in today as an example. I have a list that I prepared last night for the things that I knew I needed to do today. And then there's a list of things that I know I need to do for the week. Then when I wake up in the morning, I review the list and I say, is this still accurate, right? So for those of you who have elder care or children or animals or other things going on in your life, emergencies happen, things creep up. But let's make sure if it's derailing your day, it's an actual emergency and not just that it was someone else's last minute issue that became your primary concern. That should never be the case, ever. OK, so as I said, I reviewed in the morning and I say, OK, this is what I'm accomplishing today. And I am so extreme about it. Like I'll get asked the question, especially by my mother, like, oh, what are you doing on, on Wednesday? OK, if it's Sunday, I don't know. I don't know because I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, I know overall for the week, my tasks and the things that I'm dealing with, but I am dealing with this 24 hours. I have other times in my schedule where I'm dealing with my vision for up to five years from now. But today I'm focused on today with a slight understanding of there are things that are coming up in the future, right? And for some of you, that's a very foreign concept because you're very much like, oh my God, this is coming, this is happening. But where is the smell the roses deal with the manure of today even to build up those roses of tomorrow? Take care of these issues first. So with that in mind, as I was saying, um, there's administrative and then there's money making. A lot of times you have to know what are your money making activities. If you are an entrepreneur, if you're an employee and you're working for your company and you're coming in going, hey, I want a 10% increase and I brought in more emails than anyone else in this business. Who cares? Who cares? Now, if you're trying to say your conversion rate was higher than anyone else and therefore because for every 10 emails you got that was converted into a sale. Now the conversion is the money making activity. That's all anyone cares about. The rest of it is the administrative work that you have to do to make the money. Okay. And so, but each one is important, especially as an entrepreneur. Sometimes you get really focused on, uh, maybe making the sale, making this call, make the things that deal with that. But you know what? If you don't do your taxes, you won't have to worry about it because you won't be in business anymore. 
If you're not mailing off after a, a, a customer has ordered something and you don't have stamps or, or some type of account with FedEx or whomever else to send those packages off, you won't be in business. There are administrative things that have to happen. I say, I, I love to say that I would love to live on like a desert island. I really would. I am that kind of person. Uh, but frankly, I need internet and I need my iPad, you know, a computer, whatever. But I can make do with my iPad and internet. So, but if you're someplace and you're not paying for your cell phone bill, you're not paying your internet bill. Or if you're like me, the absent-minded professor who forgets right before they come to cut it off all the time then you can't be in business. You're spending too much time doing the things that you could have taken care of, okay? So I want you to start thinking more intentionally about this is my time that I'm allotting towards my administrative duties, my administrative purposes, my administrative functions. And sometimes administration is overseeing your employees. Sometimes it's creating that directory, updating your website, getting business cards printed, deciding about your marketing campaign. There are lots of details that go into running a business. And you have to make sure you're spending time taking care of those things or you've allotted someone to take care of them. But on the other hand, I want to make sure you're also spending enough time figuring out or actually doing what makes you money. You got to know. Show me the money. Like, where is, where is it coming from? How are you making it? Uh, do you understand how your target market is? Are you advertising to them? Are you making a sale? Sometimes we spend a lot of energy in things that we think are what we should be doing. Uh, but there's no, there's no trail. There are no receipts to show that's what you should be doing. I want you all to focus for 2024 on recognizing what administrative tasks have to happen for your business, what money-making activities have to happen for your business, and making sure there's a balance. And now, uh, listen up for our sponsors who make this show possible. Ladies, are you looking to move your office from your kitchen table to a space of your own? Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Are you looking for co-working and community? Well, then come join us at the Women's Business Center, RVA, located at 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, Suite 100, directly across the street from the Kroger at Willow Lawn. Visit us on the web at wbcrva.com or on social media at wbcrva. When you're ready for more than just office space, come join the WBCRVA family. During these challenging times, Richmond Dentistry for Children wants to remind you that we've been here for you and your children for over 25 years. Your child's body is their temple and their teeth are the doorway to good health. We provide compassionate pediatric dental care Monday through Friday. Call 804-780-2888 for your appointment or come to our office at 300 West Broad Street. RichmondDentistryForChildren.com, serving Central Virginia. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Wouldn't it be convenient and safe to communicate with your dentist, pediatrician, medical doctor, or mental health professional anywhere you are without actually traveling to our medical centers? Well, you can with a televisit at your local Capital Area Health Network. Call us at 780-0840 or go to cahealthnet.org. By that how a televisit may be your best option. We are the Capital Area Health Network, the heart of the community. Listen, attorney Alex Taylor is a soldier in a suit, defending anyone with criminal charges, DUIs, and more. Call Alex Taylor, your soldier in a suit, at 804-500-5000. I'm Alex Taylor. Don't face your criminal charges alone. Put a former prosecutor with 30 years of experience on your side. Let me show you how a soldier fights for your freedom. Call 804-500-5000 or go to alextaylorlaw.com. Life can be a struggle. Find hope, healing, and answers at the Abundant Life Church of Christ, a place to encounter God through uplifting worship, singing, prayer, the preach word, and fellowship. One step can change your life. One step could shift your destiny. There has never been a better time to take that step than now. Come be our guest every Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Abundant Life Church of Christ, a place where you belong. Okay, now, um, we talked a little bit earlier about money-making activities and administrative tasks and making sure you have a balance for what you're doing. Those are great for the foundation of this upcoming year. But I want to also make sure that mm, you don't go to jail. 
uh, that you are actually operating your business in the way that you should be operating and that you fully understand the real importance of politics, government, and your business. So we all know the obvious ones, right? We don't steal, we don't kill, all that good stuff. I, I hope you understand those basics. If not, mm, this might not be the audience for you. Just, just say. So I want to start off by, there are things that we don't think about. So for every new term of your president, your senators, your governor, your mayor, it has an impact on your business. Some of it's very obvious and some of it you might not even be thinking about. So like right now we have everyone, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Hello, wherever you are um, in the USA. And uh, we're getting ready for, our people are starting to campaign for mayor. Our current mayor has already said he's running for governor um, and various people are saying they're running for mayor. And we also have this lovely potential government shutdown, which has been alleviated one more time, but on the short term. So all these things have an impact on you and your business. One, if you're doing if you're doing business with the government, which is something I highly recommend, even with a looming shutdown, I highly recommend having your city, your county, your state, your federal government as a client, because no matter what, you'll get paid. It might be a, a delay. <laughs> delay is not denied, um, as they say, but you will get paid. Now, unlike the working with Joe and Sue down the street, they may or may not pay you. You might have to go to small business court to get your money. There are all kinds of things that may or may not happen. But with the federal government, with the city, the state, the county, you will always get paid. If you have a contractual agreement, they will pay you. So for that reason alone, I think they're amazing clients to have. All right. But for some of you, you don't even know how to get that business. So I'm going to address that for just a moment, but I also want to think about the laws themselves. So for those who didn't know, there are 10, um, there are 10 major laws that impact every entrepreneur. So the first is the FLSA, the Family Labor Standards Act. And so uh, basically it, it, it manages how much you're able to pay your employees and even how you have to treat your employees. So you can imagine already why that one should be fairly obvious. Everyone should be familiar with that one, all right? But then there's also your equal employment opportunity laws. And this is one that's been getting really sticky recently. Um, and so, because you're basically not allowed to discriminate on race, color, age, sex, nationality, religion, or disability. But, Here's how it gets interesting. So there were, um, there were like, go back and look up the Hooters case, all right? And so Hooters, which I think is still around. I don't know. I've, I've never actually been inside one. Um, and I won't even comment on that. But they got into uh, 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 an equal employment opportunity case because they wouldn't hire certain women because they didn't fit the uniform appropriately. I don't feel like I need to get all the way into this, but just in case you don't get it, if you don't have Hooters, they don't want you working at Hooters. That's the bottom line. And so it's one of those interesting things because that's their, that's what they're, that's what they're all about. That's what they're known for. That's the whole nine. For every man who tells me they're going in for the wings, you lie. There was a taste test done that showed that their food wasn't that great. So it's clearly the ambiance you're going for, right? But that's when you get into the equal employment opportunity law. Right. And so then like I'm at I work at the Women's Business Center. We generally only employ women. So these are the cases like you have to like deal with and delve into when you're thinking about how I run my business and what it represents. OK, then there, of course, there's the FMLA. And so if you are pregnant, if you are a um, father who wants to take time off for with a new birth, or you have an illness, or you have military leave, then you have your employees have the right to leave and come back and get the same job. And if not, an equivalent job, which I always find very interesting because what does, I always, I'm, I'm often thinking about it from the standpoint of the employer. What are you doing with that role? So you're either bringing someone in temporarily to fill it in, and they can't have job security because if the person returns when their time is up, you have to let them go or you have to find another role for them. 
it's very interesting, this balance of being good to your people and being good to your company. I find it absolutely fascinating. Then, of course, the consumer protection laws, which make absolute sense. If you're creating hazardous goods or creating things that, or you have deceptive practices or you're, you're putting out poison, then yeah, you, you should be sued, clearly. And then antitrust laws. So for those of you who are small business owners, you don't think about this too much. We think about it in terms of monopolies with regard to gas and everything else. But do you know that as a business, if you are posting the prices of gas prices, that like that's not, it's, it's actually illegal, which I find fascinating. So that's why if you go to those sites, people can upload the prices, but the website itself can't upload them. Because it, for the antitrust purposes, they think you're, you're colluding. I'm sorry, certain things just fascinate me. Then of course, we're coming on tax season, so you need to know the tax laws, and if you don't, you need to have a good CPA. Um, contract laws, very important. Something I highly recommend is that if you have a contract, most of the time you're recycling it and updating it. The first time you really need to go to an attorney to have it done properly. I love McCurry and Associates. They have another name in there now, but congratulations to their new partner. I just can't remember all the names. But McCurry and Associates, of course, if you're in this area, I love them, but there are others as well. The contract law, extremely important. Patent law. All right, we talk about patents and trademarks and trademark is the next one, trademark laws and environmental laws. So a lot of, if, if you're out there and you're going, I don't really know all these things, I highly recommend you have a lawyer on retainer. You get some type of legal aid assistance so you can fully understand the law and how it impacts your business. And for those who are in, for, who are in Virginia, I wanted to let you all know that the Virginia Black Chamber of Commerce is actually having two events one on February 19th from 10 to 5, they're having an advocacy day. And so on behalf of businesses, they're actually going down, going here right in Richmond, because that's where the capital is. Um, and they're going down for the House, the Senate, and, and they're actually having advocacy day to speak on behalf of business owners. And then on April 25th, 8 to 4.30, they're having uh, GovCon, and that's all about how to do business with the government. Okay, so once again, those are some really important laws that you want to, want to know as an entrepreneur. The FLSA, Equal Employment, Family and Medical Leave Act, Consumer Protection, Antitrust, Tax Laws, Contract Laws, Patent Laws, Trademark Laws, and Environmental Laws. Okay, meditate on that, and we'll be back right after this commercial break. Are you only identified as mommy, as the employee, as the worker bee? You know what? It's time for you to be identified as you. There is more to you than your function for others. Come discover it at the Diva Mastermind Retreat. That stands for doing it very authoritatively. It's time for you to find your voice, find your place, and make your mark. Join us October 7th through 11th this year in 2024 in Outer Banks, North Carolina, where we'll help you with mastermind moments, We'll help you with seminars, sessions, and the camaraderie of other boss ladies just like you. Don't forget to join us for the fun. Visit divamastermind at groovepages.com to get your ticket today. Only three spots left. We'll see you then. In honor of the Women's Business Center RVA five-year anniversary, the countdown is on. Ladies, it's time for the WBC RVA Toolkit. You don't want to miss it. It means every Thursday, your co-work, for, well, not for free, but it's included. So that's co-working every Thursday. Each month, there's one seminar and one group coaching. So all day Thursday, you can come hang out here at the Women's Business Center RVA, and it's just... $25 a month. Tell them about it, Joanne. Yes. And a couple of the topics that we will be talking about, discussing and reviewing and going through are starting a business the right way, because we do want to start off on we do want to start off the right way. We're also going to talk about a business model canvas and how you how your company creates value for its customers. Also, goal setting, which is very important. Finances, even developing your pitch, also uh, social media distribution and content, and much, much more. So we are excited about seeing you there. So you can register today at WBCRVA.com. Looking for resources to start, build, or level up your business? Want to know what motivates your favorite entrepreneur? Did you miss the last show? No worries. 
check out and subscribe to the Work Hardaholic YouTube channel. See behind the scenes. Hear the extended version of interviews. Catch one of our trainings. Miss the show? No worries. Like, share, subscribe. Our YouTube channel at Work Hard A Hollet and happy entrepreneuring. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Okay, so at this point, I want to talk to you all about the benefits, or actually the differences, and in being an intrapreneur and an entrepreneur. But before I even delve into that, I want to make sure I remind you all that um, we opened up a few spaces, I think like two or three, for the Diva Mastermind Retreat which is October 7th, I believe through the 11th. It's held in Outer Banks, North Carolina. It's an amazing event. It's the best thing I've ever done. I'm super proud of it. It's an amazing opportunity for ladies to come together and to support and actually help pull back the layers of confusion in our businesses, in our leadership roles, and in our lives. And it's also a lovely, relaxing time. I don't know about you, I love the beach. I love the beach above, above every other place that I can think of, especially when it's warm, not that it'll be in October, but it's an amazing, amazing event. So if you're interested in that, you can visit shirleycrawford.com. Um, to stick with that. Or, or DM us, send us a message, we'll send you all that information. You can email admin at workhardaholics.com. Okay, so when we speak about entrepreneurship, uh, versus entrepreneurship. I always found it fascinating because we're always coining these new terms, these new terms. And so entrepreneurship, if you've heard the term I-N-T-R-A versus entrepreneurship, E-N-T-R-E, -E, um, the really big difference is that one is an employee and one is the boss. So, uh, Back in the day, back in, back in the day, long, long ago in a land far away, when I was in the MBA program at VCU, uh, we had this conversation about the best type of business to own. And studies showed that a family-owned business was the best kind. And the reason for it is really because um, in a time of turmoil and situations, while a family might curse each other out in the back room, they will still come to work. They will still do the job even if pay is delayed for a month. With an employee, if you delay their pay a minute, you will be looking for a new employee, especially in 2024. And so there are all these studies that showed that family-owned businesses, the members were more dedicated, more committed, they were better ambassadors. Like on all the, on all the lists, they checked the marks, okay? So with that in mind, Standard Corporate America has been trying to find ways to behave like a family owned business or like a small business, even though they are a conglomerate. And I often use the example of GE because it's very fascinating. They run this very large corporation as if it is like 40 some odd small companies. So every division, if it's um, GE uh, lighting, GE um, locomotive, did you know they had a locomotive? They used to have GE financial, but now they bought themselves and they're now Genworth or GE, whichever of them, they, they run it like a separate company and then they compete against each other. And if they're not number one or number two in their industry, they actually will shut them down. It's very fascinating, right? But it allows them to pivot a lot faster than if they had to deal with the entire conglomerate of GE. GE, we bring good things to life. Okay, uh, but for the rest of us, uh, who are out here and trying to understand, okay, well, that's what, that's how entrepreneurship comes into play. So if you're working for a corporation that's trying to make sure that you have the ability to make decisions, to make changes, to pivot without having to go through a bunch of red tape, they're trying to create an, an entrepreneurial situation, culture, okay? For the entrepreneur, you're doing it all along. You're the one making the decisions. You're the one who's making it happen. You're the one who has all the risk. You have all the responsibility. As an entrepreneur, it's, it's, all, it's very similar to the entrepreneur. You're still super creative. You're still out here making things happen and, you know, but you don't have the risk of the entrepreneur and you don't have the benefit. So an employee is an employee is an employee is an employee is still an employee. So your feedback that you get to offer is just that, but you can create a million dollar campaign and you get 
whatever your salary is. It does not matter what impact you make. And that's when you write that down. You're, you're, you're pitching to get more in your next promotion and your next evaluation. But the bottom line is an entrepreneur is integral in creating, developing, and making their company better and making their company more cutting edge. They are the alpha tester, the beta tester. They're the ones who are out there doing all the things, but they get none of the benefits. I mean, that, that's really the bottom line. And so, I, of course, I always support being an entrepreneur. But I'm going to share part of this list that was uh, shared with me on benefits and drawbacks of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. I feel like we know all the ones that deal with entrepreneurship. We're, we're pretty aware that as an entrepreneur, we work, baby, a lot. We get the job done, all right? But we do have the autonomy to be able to, you know, get things accomplished, um, we get to make decisions pretty easily without a lot of red tape and we get the money, we get the financial benefits, but we also get the penalties, all right? For an, entre for an entrepreneur, there is little or no financial risk. Um, it can lead to career advancement, can lead to, but once again, you have to speak up for that to happen. There is a certain level of personal satisfaction that everything has shown and being able to know that, hey, I created that plan. I created that marketing plan. I came up with this new idea for this new widget. But you're not your own boss. You don't have autonomy. You still have to be assigned accordingly. Less decision-making, less financial reward. For me, that's a really big deal, all right? Um, and you might not even get all the credit for what you did because your boss will, okay? So for those of you who are out there asking, what exactly is the difference between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur? The main difference is an entrepreneur is an employee, an entrepreneur is the boss. All right, on that note, that's what we wanted to share with you all today. If you have any particular question that you'd like to see answered here on the Work Harderholic Show, please feel free to email us at admin at workhardaholics.com. Otherwise, as we always say, live better, do better, be better, and happy entrepreneuring. Subscribe, repeat, like, share, subscribe, repeat, repeat, repeat. Thanks for tuning in to Work Hardaholics. Support our show by following on YouTube and all major social media platforms at Work Hardaholic. Until next week, happy entrepreneuring.